Nanach, lesson six, the Rebbe's own words. God said to Moses, Kau Jahashu, Nanach, Nachmo, Nachman, Nachma, Meyu, Mabu, Waban. Oh, each and every person must minimize his own honor and maximize the honor of God. For anyone who seeks honor will not attain godly honor, but only royal honor. About <clears throat> which, uh, which the verse says, royal honor is to be analyzed. Everyone analyzes this person and asks, who is he that he receives such honor? And they oppose him and say that he does not deserve it. However, someone who flees from honor will minimize his own honor and maximizes the honor of God. Such a person will attain godly honor, in which case people do not analyze whether or not he deserves the honor he receives regarding such a person. The verse says, The honor of God is to be concealed, for it is forbidden to analyze this honor. But it is impossible to attain this honor other than by way of repentance. Now, the main elements of repentance is to hear oneself being scorned and to maintain one's silence. This is because there is no covered honor without the letter Kaf and Kaf. A Chaf alludes to Kasser, which corresponds to, to the divine name of Ekya, represented by repentance. This is because the literal meaning of the word Ekya, Aleph K Yud K, is I am ready to be, since before repentance one has yet to be, as if one has not yet not has not come into being in the world, for it would have been, for it would have been better had one not been created, only when one is aroused to purify oneself and to repent. Does one enter into the realm of Ekya, of ex existing in the world of I am ready to be? This is an aspect of Kesser, for Kesser means waiting, an aspect of repentance. As our sages say, one who is aroused to purify himself is assisted. It can be compared to one who enters a store to purchase fragrant, fragrant oil and when is told, wait a minute, etc. Oh, which alludes to Kev Vesser. As the verse says, Qatar, wait a while for me, and I will tell you, and I will tell you. Before repentance, though, the state of Ekya is concealed from the person, for one has yet to prepare himself now for himself to exist in the world. Now the concealment of the countenance of Ekya is dumb, which is bloodshed and scorn, for those who scorn me will be scorned. This is because the blood in the left side of the heart, which is the chamber of the evil inclination, as the verse says, the heart of the fool is on the left, is still in its full force. Hence, scorn and bloodshed befall this person for the concealment and turning away of the countenance of Ekeh is numerically equivalent to the blood. Note the above means that the back of the name back of the Nahim Ekya is numerically equivalent to Dam, which is arrived at by writing the name backwards. That is Aleph, Aleph K, Aleph K Yod, Aleph K Yod K. Each time going back to the beginning of the word, the total value of these letters is 44, equiv equivalent to Dam, which is why the concept of the turning away of the countenance of Ebev Ekya and its concealment is connected with Dham, blood. To rectify this, one must transform Dham into Dham, silence, and <clears throat> be among those who hear themselves being disgraced, and do not respond, and do not care when their honor is scorned, and when one remains silent for God, then God will make halalim corpses of his enemies. As the verse says, remain silent for God, and his choilil, anticipate him, we, he, will, he will turn them into corpses for you. This is alluded to in the verse, My heart is hollow, hollow inside me, meaning that the blood in the left chamber, hollow of the heart, has been reduced, an aspect of the slaughter of the evil inclination by way of which one attains godly honor, as the verse says, One who slaughters a thanksgiving sacrifice honors me, which the sages explain to be referring to the slaughter of the evil inclination, and one must constantly be involved in repentance, for who can say, I have refined my heart, I have purified my sins, for even when a person says, I have sinned, I have done wrong, I have transgressed, 
this too can be said with complete sincerity. This cannot. This too cannot be said with complete sincerity without any without any ulterior motivation. This is alluded to in the verse itself. Who can say I have refined my heart? I have purified my sins. That is, who can say that he has refined his heart of ulterior of ulterior motives? Even when he says I have sinned, and who can say that he has purified his sins? <clears throat> that is, that his saying. That his saying, I have sinned, etc., is purified of ulterior motivations. Hence, one must repent for one's earlier repentance. That is, for one saying, I have sinned, I have done wrong, I have transgressed, about which the verse says, they honored me with their lips. For through repentance, one merits God, God's godly honor. For through repentance, one merits godly honor. But their hearts are far from me. And even if one knows that one has done complete repentance, one nevertheless needs to repent for one's earlier repentance. For when one initially repented, one did so according to one's perceptions at that time. But after one repents, one certainly comes to a deeper perception of God. Thus compared with one's newer perception, one's early perceptions are certainly considered gross. I grow such that one must repent for one's earlier perception, hence for having perceived God's greatness in a cor corporeal or corpo corporeal in a corporeal corporeal or in a corporeal in a corporeal or way. This is an aspect of the world to come, which is totally Shabbos. That is totally repentance. As the verse says, you will return, Shafto Shabbos, to God your Lord. For the essence of the world to come is perceiving godliness, as in they will know me, from their young to their elders. Thus, whenever we will reach a higher perception, we will have to repent for the earlier perception. This is what our sages meant when they said, whoever slaughters his evil inclination. Or that is who repents. An aspect of my heart is hollow within me of remain silent for God of Ekia Kesser honor and confesses for it. That is, confesses for slaughtering his evil inclination in other words. Repents for his repentance and earlier perceptions is as if he has honored God into world. For the first repentance was an aspect of repentance of the honor of this world. But once attaining a deeper perception after repentance, when one perceives God's greatness that much more, that much more deeply, and thus repents for one's earlier repentance, this repentance is an aspect of the honor of the world to come. This is what our sages commented on the verse, or yakar vikipoin, precious and insignificant light. Precious and insignificant light, the are the light that is Yaku, precious in this world, will be considered key point, frozen, weightless, insignificant in the world to come. And in the world to come, when people will attain a deeper perception of godliness, they will certainly regret and repent for their perception of in this world. For the perception in this of this world is corporeal compared to the perception perception of the world to come. So it is as if one has honored God. So it is. <clears throat> so it is as if one has honored God into worlds. For the slaughtering of the evil inclination is the first repentance, an aspect of this worldly honor, and the confession for the slaughter is the second repentance, an aspect of the honor of the world to come, compared to which the first honor becomes frozen and weightless. This is what God is quoted as saying: "You did this." And I remain silent. You thought, Ekya, I would be like you. For whereas when a person remains silent, he enters the category of Ekya, as said, when God remains silent, this has nothing to do with Ekya. For this concept cannot apply to God. Rather, it is so that man receives his punishment in this world, in which case his sins are laid out before him, and he is rebuked for them. As that verse concludes, I will rebuke you and set it out before your eyes. Now when a person wants to follow the path of repentance, he must become bucky proficient in halacha, walking, following both Jewish law and the path of repentance. And one must be proficient in two skills, proficient in running, progressing, 
and proficient in retreating, con 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 consolidating. As it says, fortunate is the one who enters, fortunate is the one who enters and leaves. This is an aspect of, well, if I ascend to the heavens, there you are, an aspect of entering, proficiency and progressing. And if I descend to the pit, here you are, an aspect of leaving, proficiency and retreating. This is alluded to in, I am for my beloved, and my, my, and my beloved is for me. I, I am for my beloved, alludes to entering, and my beloved is for me, alludes to leaving, and this alludes to the mystical intentions of the month of Elul. This is the essence of, God, of God's glory, as alluded to in the verse. You shall honor oh, it, you shall honor it by refrain, refraining from doing your ways. Your ways is in the plural, referring, referring to entering and leaving. When one is proficient in these two ways, then one can follow the path of repentance. And it's saying God the honor, as the verse says, you shall honor it by refraining, refraining from doing your ways, meaning that one attains Kesser, for there is no honor without a cuff. A chav, and then God's right hand is outstretched to accept one's repentance. This is the mystical intention of the month. By way of maintaining quiet and silence, the state of the vow, Chirik is brought about, as stated in Tikkun Zohar, beneath his feet was the likes of a work of sapphire stone. This refers to the Chirik, corresponding to the earth is Hadoim, the footstool of my feet. Hadoim represents Demimo, Oi Quiet, represented by the lower point the footstool of the Aleph, the Hebrew Aleph, letter Aleph is composed of two points, two dots, two chiriks, one above and one below, a dividing line above, O Aleph, now the upper point of the Aleph corresponds to Kesser, as a yin above the sky that was above, their heads was the appearance of a sapphire stone in the shape of a throne. Hidden above the vav, the sky of the Aleph is the upper point, which is the hidden throne. As said, don't seek what is beyond you, and don't analyze what is hidden from you. This is an aspect of God's honor is to be hidden, an aspect of Kesser. Now the vav in the Aleph is the Shemayim sky. Aish and Mayim, fire and water, representing the embarrassment that causes one's, one's face to change colors. This is why the sky is considered the embodiment of all colors. Through this, one becomes Adam, a human, to sit on the throne as in above the throne was the appearance of a human image. For there is no Adam without an Aleph. Thus the letters of Adam are Aleph Daham. Alluding that by remaining silent, the hoim for God, and Aleph is created, and one becomes an Adam to sit on the throne. This is because the Vav dividing the Aleph represents the sky. That is the embodiment of all colors, which is embarrassment as said. And the lower point is the quiet and silence, as in the earth is my footstool, corresponding to Chirik, to beneath his foot, to beneath his feet. And the upper point is the hidden throne, corresponding to repentance, to God's honor is, is to be hidden, to God's honor is to be hidden, to don't analyze what is hidden from you, and to above the sky was the image of a throne, which makes a human to sit on the throne, corresponding to above it was the appearance of a human image, then a unification between the sun and the moon takes place, meaning that the sun enlightens the moon, creating also a unification between Moses and Joshua, for the countenance of Moses is like the face of the sun, corresponding to the upper point, the throne, Moses, Moses, as in his throne will be before me like the sun, corresponding to above the sky was the image of a throne. The lower point represents Joshua, corresponding to the moon, to beneath his feet was the likes of a work of Livnas, a sapphire stone. Livnas represents the Levana, the moon, and the Vav dividing the Yalef represents the sky, corresponding to the tent, as in Joshua ben Nun did not leave the tent. The tent is the sky, as in he stretched them out like a tent to dwell in, and he hangs out the heavens like a curtain. This is alluded to in the curtains of the tents. Now the upper throne, that is the upper da, the upper point, is divided into three drops, 
for repentance must be done under three conditions. As the verse says, lest, lest he see with his eyes, lest he see with its eyes, lest, lest it see with its eyes, hear with its ears, and understand with its heart, and repent. These three aspects form the vow, segel, and the segel represents the sun. That is the countenance of Moses, which is like the face of the sun. This is the meaning of what Rabbi Baba Khanna said. I was once traveling in the desert, and I saw these ducks that were so fat that they're not so ice. My feathers were shemitin. Oh, uh-huh, falling off. Streams of fat flowed from beneath them. I asked them, would I have a portion in you in the world to come? One of them lifted up its leg for me, and another of them lifted up its wing for me, each one alluding to him his portion. I, when I came before the Elazar, he said to me, the Jewish people will be held accountable for them. Rabbi Baba Khanna had gone to delve into the desirable trait of humility in which a person renders himself like a desert to be trodden upon a loo, allowing everyone to tread upon him. He met wise men represented by ducks. As the sages said, one who sees a duck in a dream shouldn't anticipate wisdom. Their nozos feathers were shmitin, falling off, refers to di- dispute and disgrace, as in when people are fighting, yinatsu, yinatsu. That is, they pay no attention to the disputes and disgrace that others are causing them, but, there, but here they're disgrace and refrain from retorting. Indeed, they are called wise because of their silence. Since silence is a fence for wisdom, for silence is an aspect of Kesser. Though this means that through silence one attains repentance, which is an aspect of Kesser. This is why silence is called a fence for wisdom, since a fence is an aspect of a Kesser, a crowd, because a crowd fences in and surrounds something, in this case wisdom. This crown, which is an aspect of a fence, comes about through silence. I have said, and this is why silence is a fence for wisdom. This is implied by the verb shmitim, which is used, which is used as in shamoit release any debt owed one by a creditor, and meaning that they not avenge the disgrace. This was because they were so fat, alluding to the verse, you became fat and thick. That is, they consider themselves as being in the category of becoming fat and thick. Meaning that the reason why they listen to their disgrace and do not react is because they are busy repeat, repenting for their sins. As the verse there says, Jeshurun became fat and rebelled, which is an aspect of the heart of his people has become fat, lest it see with its eyes, hear with its ears, and understand with its heart and repent. Since repentance is dependent upon the, these three conditions, these three can be shayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayay
that Moses shined into Joshua, as in Jacob was a wholesome man who dwelled in tents. This is an aspect of the Jewish people who commanded three things to wipe out the descents of Amalek, an aspect of he will subdue who peoples beneath us. Or oh, to, to appoint a king, an aspect of the pride of Jacob, of a star will go forth from Jacob, which refers to a king and get to be yield. For themselves the temple and ask of Moses of das knowledge as the sages say whoever possesses knowledge is it is as if the temple had built been had been built during his lifetime which corresponds to he will choose for us our inheritance from lesson number four till here other Rebbe's own words this is the meaning of God said to Moses called Joshua Moses repents represents the upper point and Joshua represents the lower point and stand in the tent. This is an aspect of the sky, of the vault that divides the Yahalif. And I will instruct him, since Moses was then supposed to transmit everything to Joshua. But since there is no authority on the day of death, for when a tzaddik leaves this world, he has no authority and power to enlighten Joshua. Therefore, I will instruct him, God himself, for authority had reverted to him. This entire subject is actually encapsulated within the shape of the Yahalif, that is, the upper point. Lower point and the above reflect on this deeply. This is related to what our sages taught us before the Israelites entered the land. They were instructed to fulfill the three, three commandments, to wipe out the descendants of Amalek, to build for themselves the temple, and to appoint a king. Wiping out the descendants of Amalek is an aspect of Joshua. The lower point for the main responsibility for wiping out Amalek was upon Joshua. As the verse says, Go out and fight the Malik as the Zoya there explains. Building the temple is an aspect of Moses, the upper point for whoever possesses knowledge as if the temple had been built in his lifetime. And Moses is the epitome of knowledge. A boy appointing a king corresponds to the sky, the above that divides the olive, as the verse says, a star came forth from Jacob, which refers to a king who rides from Jacob's descendants. And the metaphor of a star is used because the sky, which this represents, has stars and constellations. Thus, from Jacob, for Jacob was a wholesome person who dwelled, who dwelled. In tents corresponding to the sky, as in he stretched it out like a tent. As the Zohar explains that Jacob is an aspect of the Vav, the his three commandments correspond to repentance. This, the, this last paragraph is an alternate version of what was said in the lesson and regarding which the Rebbe referred in the lesson to the mystical intentions of Elul. <clears throat> I heard a drop in the ocean from him. In the Kabbalistic writings we find that all of the mystical intentions of Elul <clears throat> <clears throat> In the Kabbalistic writing, we find that all of the mystical intentions of Ehelul are summed up in the verse who makes a derech pathway in the sea. Meaning that our intention is to shine an aspect of a derech into the sea. derech corresponds to twice the divine name of Yaboik, for the numerical value of derech is twice Yaboik. 112 times 2, 224. This is brought about by the two names of Kesa and Sag. Kesa and Sag. Oye, Kesa and Sag. Which together add up to Deirech to twice. Yeah, boy, 161. Oye, Kesa plus 63. Sag equals 224. Furthermore, the name of Kesa must be visualized with a segel visualization. And the name of Sag with the Chirik valualization. Now the Segel of Kasal and the Chirik of Sag add up to 400 Kasal. It's actually the name of Akya spelled out fully. Oh, that is Aleph K, Yubububud K, 
which are ten letters, and each letter is vowelized. On where you yet they segel, the segel itself is three dots, one dot and you hood ten, and hence each segel is thirty, and ten of them is three hundred. The name Sag is, it is the ten letters of the name Yud Kei Vav Kei, spelled out for holy Yud Kei Vav Kei, and each letter has a chirik one dot. Adding up to one hundred. Oh, all of us together, they add up to four hundred. Numerically equivalent to Shuta outstretched. Alluding he that the above con concepts of all gods outstretched, you mean right arm. To accept one's repentant yes, the yes is because you mean spelled out fully. Yud mem, yud nun. 20, 80, 20, 106 plus 1 for the word itself to 27 adds up to derech, <coughs> which is twice ya boyik, together with its three letters, 224 plus 3, 227. Oh, you never come see and understand how all of these mystical intentions are alluded to and hidden within this lesson in a most amazing and awesome way. For the lesson states that one who wants to repent what must become proficient into skills in running and returning, ascending and descending. If I ascend to the heavens, there you are, means being proficient in the skill of Ravava running. And if I descend to the pit, here you are, Oh, me means being proficient in the skill of return of learning on the same simple level. This means that anyone who wants to follow the path of repentance must gird his loins to constantly strengthen his resolve to serve God, both during times of spiritual progress and times of spiritual setback, as alluded to in the verse. If I ascend to the heavens, if I descend to the pit, Oy this means that even when one attains, even when one attains some exalted spiritual level, one should not be complacent and self-satisfied with it. Oy ba wo 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 be proficient enough to know and believe that he has not, that he has yet a long way to go. There Oh, there you yes, is the concept of proficiency in running, ascending, if I ascend to the heavens. Oh, yeah, there you are, if I ascend. Oh, God, if I ascend to the heavens, there you are on the other hand. Even if one has suffered, I fall into the spiritual depths. One should never despair, but should always seek God from wherever one is in any way possible. For God can be found even in the depths of hell, and even there one can be intimately close with God. This is if I descend to the pit, here you are. This is the concept of being proficient in returning, for one cannot follow the path of repentance without being proficient in both these skills. The Rebbe was very specifically used the word Bucky proficient, since it indeed requires very great proficiency to know how to constantly toil in the service of God and to always anticipate reaching even higher levels, ever higher levels. Oy, no, yet never to despair under any circumstances, no matter what, and to live by the verse. If I descend to the pit, here you are, and the yes to is alluded in the mystical intentions, uh, intentions of Elo for the letter, for the letters of Baki are the same as the letters of the name Yaboik, implying that one who attains the two proficiencies of Baki in running and returning will thereby attain the path of repentance, but twice Baki is twice Yaboik which adds up to derech the path for us. Oh, this path is created by way of the intentions embodied in the segol of Kesor and the chirik of Sag, which together add up to twice Yabuk is said. Another mystery regarding these two proficiencies is that proficiency in ascending, which the aspect of the segol of Kesor is alluded to in the verse, If I ascend to heaven, which in Hebrew reads, Im Esak Shemayim, Im Esak Shemayim, the letter is being identical, Kisa Esak, and proficiency in descending, which is alluded to in the verse, if I descend to the pit, corresponding to the Chirik of Sag, and the Hebrew word Sag, oh, he actually means to turn back, as we see in the verse, don't Taseg, 
push back ancient boundary markers, which refers to a uh, to usurp uh, usurping another's property by pushing back the boundary marker. This turning back is an aspect of a descent, a falling from one spiritual level. The lesson being that even then, one should muster the courage never to despair. For God can be found there also as the verse. There, can't for God can be found there also as the verse of weathers. If I descend to the pits, here you are, here you are born. oil is connected with the sun, the upper point of the olive, which is comprised of three drops. This corresponds to if I ascend to the heaven, a message to Mayim, corresponding to the segel of Kaso, there being the same Hebrew letters, while the Chirik, oil which corresponds to the lower point of the olive. To if I ascend to the pit, here you are, corresponds to the Chirik of Sag. This is what the Rebbe said in the lesson, when one is proficient in these two skills, then one can follow the path of repentance for twice, Bucky, which is an aspect of Kisa and Sag. If I ascend to the heavens, there you are, and if I descend, etc., the derech, which is numerically equivalent to twice, Baki Kasabla Sag, Kasabla Sag, for the essence of the path of repentance is attained through these true proficiencies, and then God's right arm is stretched out to accept one's repentance. For Yemin spelled out fully, is numerically equivalent to derech, which is twice, Baki and Shuta, stretched out, is numerically equivalent to the total numerical value. You have the Segel of Kisol and the Chirag of Sag, which are themselves the aspect of the upper point and the lower point, which symbolizes the need to seek God at all times, both in ascent and in descent. If I ascend to the heavens, there you are, and if I descend to the pits, here you are, which are the two skills. Hence, one when one possesses proficiency in these two skills, then one can follow the path, follow the path of repentance and then God's right arm. Why is outstretched to accept one's repentance? Understand this well, for it is very deep. <clears throat> now we can understand the interconnections in this lesson, the upper and lower points, which the Rebbe and Achnachman the discusses at the end of the lesson, are themselves this same concept of the two proficiencies. This connection is not explicit in the lesson, but is self-understood from the intentions of Elul. This itself is also the idea of, re of repenting for one's earlier repentance. The, the slaughter of the evil inclination is the concept of remaining silent for God. The initial repentance or oh, the this worldly honor, the lower point oh, that is created by the silence, by remaining silent from God. All this represented by the Chirik of Sag, representing proficiency in returning. The second repentance, though, is an aspect of the honor of the world to come, of God's honor is to be concealed. The upper point, Kessel, which corresponds to Mo Moses to Segel. Understand well how all the points in the lesson are interconnected with each other in an amazing and awesome way, but the main thing is that when a person finds himself in a very lowly level, he should nevertheless encourage himself and believe that there is still hope for him, for God can be found even where he is. As in, if I descend to the pit, here you are, my soul doing. One draws upon oneself the law, the holiness of the divine name of Yitke Vavke, spelled out in full of, or in full to equal song, the name that sustains all those who have turned back, Nasoik, from holiness, so that they not fall completely. This is the concept of of being proficient, Bucky, in the skill of returning, an aspect of the name of Yabohoik, the name of Sag, on the other hand. When a person merits attaining some exalted spiritual level but does not remain there complacently but continues toiling to ascend ever higher, oh, he then draws upon himself the holy name of Ekya, spelled out in full equal Kaso, which represents being proficient in the skill of running. This is because a person, by way of his actions and effort in serving God, causes unifications of the divine names and draws their holiness upon him. Understand this well, it's discussed also is the lesson in this lesson in the lesson is the concept that that by remaining silent when one is disgraced one is able to repent and ask me to cast it this is because silence is a fence around wisdom for one must be very careful to judge everyone favorably even those who oppose and disgrace a person and one must remain silent for to their 
words. This creates an aspect of Kesser, as we see in the parable. In the Madrish, someone saw his friend making a crown and asked, For whom is he making it? For the king, he answered. If it's for the king, he told him, then make sure that you set in it every precious stone that you can find. This teaches us that every Jewish person is an aspect of God's crown. And all types of precious stones must be set that into it. This means that one should always seek and make the effort to find whatever possible way to judge another Jew favorably, for this is an aspect of God's castle, his crown. And this is what our sages meant when they said, judge everyone favorably, he hence by judging everyone favorably, which calls for remaining silent to another's disgracing. For we have found, for we have found, Okay, we find, for we find, for we have found some justific, just for just for some justification for his doing so. Since we have accepted that according to that person's understanding, he feels obligated to disgrace us. We have created an aspect of Kesser for as said by remaining silent. We make a Kesser a crown. Holy lesson seven, the Rebbe's own words, and these are the laws that you shall set before them. Our sages said before them implies that women are, are equated with men regarding the laws. And the Mechil the comments, does this mean that the students will study and not understand? The verse says that you shall set before them, set them before them like a table is set. <speaking in Hebrew> Nach na 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 na